I'm Amanda McGrady and I'm a director of photography. Today we're here at High Output's Brighton Studio 86 with High Output Academy and Women in Film and Video of New England. I've been a High Output customer for many years. I have attended lots of their events and I've known lots of people who work here. Studio 86 is a great option when you just need a small studio. That way you can get in and out quickly and you have access to lighting overhead with the grid. You have access to power and it's conveniently located close to Boston. So it's a really good option. It's really important for filmmakers to have a good relationship with their local rental house so that they can get all of the equipment that they need. Every job is different. And so you might have some of your own gear, but there's going to be times when you need more or you need something more specialized. And that's when you can reach out to a rental house. They might also be able to help you if you're not exactly sure what you need for your shoot. They're the experts and they can help you figure out what you might need. In the past, I have definitely reached out to folks at High Output when trying to figure out how to light a night exterior scene, which is the most complicated and expensive type of scene of all. They are able to help you figure out what lights are in your budget. For me, lighting and camera work go hand in hand. We're always thinking about the story and how the camera work can tell the story and how the lighting can tell the story as well. So when I'm working with the lighting team, I'm working with the gaffer, who is the chief lighting technician, and I'm working with the key grip, who is the head of the grip department, and we are figuring out how to light a scene dramatically, beautifully, and how to do it efficiently within a given amount of time. I start thinking about what the lighting for a scene is going to look like pretty much the first time I read the script. I keep an open mind at first just to think of all the different ways I could light a scene and then when I start talking with the director and see what they have in mind we'll really narrow that down and, and come up with a cohesive look for the entire film and then I'll talk to my gaffer about how we're going to achieve that and sometimes I'll have a very specific idea about what lights I want to use and, and where to place them. Other times I might have just a general sense of what I want it to feel like and the gaffer will come to me and say like these lights will work best in this situation like because I've done a similar setup before and it worked and I'll say oh great so it the relationship's always a little different every job's a little different when you work on a film where you have a big grip and electric department it's a lot of equipment it's a lot of trucks and you know loading in and out and carts and it's it's a lot even making the jump from doing a small short film to a bigger film like a feature film, you're going to feel the increase in the number of crew and it's a lot of people to be around, a lot of personalities and a lot of stuff that you have to navigate your way through <laughs> to get to the set. So um, I think it can maybe be a little bit intimidating when you're on a set that has a lot of equipment and you're not familiar with the equipment. What you should keep in mind is that everybody is working towards making the movie beautiful and all of the people that are in the lighting crew and the group crew, they just want to make it look really good and they're sort of perfectionists sometimes. Everyone's working towards the same goal. Everyone wants to help the director achieve their vision. When you think about it in terms of that and that we're all trying to make the actors look good and feel comfortable and that's the goal, then it becomes a lot easier and a lot less scary because you're all working towards the same goal. For me, like starting out, I thought, that lighting and camera were like really technical and they are but they're also artistic and beautiful and so if you think about it from an artistic sense and how you would want a picture to look and you think about it in your mind how you want it to look before you paint it do the same thing when you're making a film you think about how you want the scene to look and then everyone works together to create it as a director of photography my relationship with the gaffer is very important. We need to understand each other and communicate clearly because we're all, once again, working towards the same goal, but we might have different ideas about how to do it. When I'm setting up a shot and thinking about the scene that the shot's a part of, the, the overall story that the scene is involved in, and what our characters are doing, where they are in their journey. So I want to make sure that the shot also tells a story. Like if you think of it as a photograph or a still image that tells a story, and just simplify it down to that, you know, what is the power dynamic? Is, is, is someone small in the frame or are, they, or are they dominating the frame? 
something like that. You could express those ideas just through your framing and then also you can augment that with your lighting. So if the lighting is dramatic uh, and mysterious, maybe there's a silhouette, you know, you get that feeling of mystery versus if it's really well lit and, and happy and cheerful. It seems obvious, I guess, but there's a lot of work that goes into it and a lot of thought that goes into planning out each shot. I mean, it's great if you can go to the monitor together and look and just say like, okay, like the key is looking really good, but we need to work that backlight a little bit to get it, you know, right on their shoulder and so it's not hitting their cheek. Something like that, I mean, it's really specific. We're looking out for like these very minor details, but a good gaffer will look at the frame and see that instantly. So if we can both just sort of look at it and go that, and, and then they fix it, it's, you know, that's the best relationship. The advent of LED lighting has changed the way we work a little bit. In some ways, it's a lot easier because the lights uh, physically weigh less, they aren't as hot, they don't use as much electricity, so we don't have to worry about tripping a breaker in a small space. Um, we don't need a huge generator, and so it's better for the environment. There's so many positives about having LED lighting, and it's much faster in a lot of ways to make a quick adjustment uh, in color temperature or brightness with just a dimmer instead of having to set up, you know, flags and scrims. So it's great. A lot of the LED lights tend to be very wide and flooded, so they're a bit hard to control. So that keeps the grips pretty busy still, diffusing the light and, and flagging to keep, you know, spill off of the walls and things like that. I draw inspiration from everywhere. Uh, I draw inspiration from paintings and photographs and just the world around me. Sometimes I will just be somewhere and I will notice the way the light's coming through the window and I'll be like, wow, and maybe I might even film it with my phone <laughs> and um, try to show it to other people and they're usually not interested. But yeah, I just love the way that light naturally happens in certain places. And I also, of course, watch other films and you know, admire the work of other PPs.